Professor, there's still people in the waiting room. Okay, so I think we need to get started, right? Even, I mean, uh, we still have some people, I think uh, they haven't joined us, but uh, I think it's time to get started. Okay, let me share the screen again. Okay, so today, uh, I mean, we cannot have in-person class. So let's have like a, a review class, okay? Make it a, a review class. Uh, we will review what we have learned, you know, uh, during the past, uh, I mean, uh, three, four weeks, right? Uh, around four weeks. So at the beginning of this, uh, class, I showed you this uh, chemical reaction engineering algorithm, right? Actually, this will actually slow the whole uh, course, you know? So the foundation is the more balance. And then the second uh, floor is least raw. And the third floor is the storage metric. Then we can combine these three building blocks together to solve the isothermal reactor, right? And the, moreover, you know, if we also consider some uh, heat effects, right, then we need to uh, deal with the energy balance. That will be very similar to the more balance, okay? So that means, you know, as long as you learn more balanced, rich law, storage match very well, and how uh, to, when you know how to design the uh, isothermal reactor, you know, then should be easy for you, you know, to further uh, design some uh, non-isothermal reactor with heating effects. So even without me, you know, I think uh, you you will understand the textbook very well. You know, you you can you can you can do some design uh, uh, problems, solve that by yourself. You know, so the more balance, right? I think you have learned that actually uh, probably in your first year, right? So the general more balances, right? We have in and out, and we have generation equals accumulation, right? So here, you know, we use the more of the reactant right, as our focus. So that means the more change, right, with time, that's the uh, accumulation. And here, pay attention here, you know, the generation. The generation is related to your uh, rate, reaction rate. But here you see, we only use R, right? I don't put any, I don't put any minus or, or here, right? I don't put any minus. So that means, that means, you know, if it's a, a reactant, so disappearing, so the R is negative, the value is, is negative, you know? So for the generation, it's, it's positive, right? So you already have there, you know? So you need to pay attention, uh, to this uh, generation, okay, generation. 
Okay, so with that, you know, we can uh, establish the more balances for each reactor, right? For each reactor. So uh, for the batch reactor, there is no in and out. So that means the accumulation equals the generation. If you take a look at this uh, equation, you will find out actually this is the definition of the reaction rate, right? The R equals actually, so let me see, so see here, right? If you move V to the left hand, D and A divided by V, that's concentration, right? So that means D C A over D T equals R A. That's actually the definition of R A, you know, how we define R A, right? Of course, now if A is a reactant, you will say R A is negative, right? Because why? Because the concentration decreases with time, right? So D C A is negative, right? And for the flow system, for the flow system, now you need to consider in and out. For the CSTR, for the CSTR, uh, we assume you know the RA is uniform in the reactor. So then we can take it out, you know, we can take it out. So we have this uh, uh, algebraic for me, algebraic form of the uh, design equation, right? And here also for the flow system, right? We normally concede the steady state. That means the accumulation, this term is zero, right? This term is zero. Uh, for the PFR, so we have the differentiate form. So you can say here dV, we cannot uh, uh, take dV out because this is not uniform, RA is not uniform, you know, RA is not uniform in, in the reactor. So this is normally the differentiated, it's a differentiated form, right? And for PBR, uh, wait a moment, some people in the waiting room. Okay. So for the PBR, it's similar to the PFR, right? The only difference is, you know, for the PFR, normally you don't have any catalysts, you know. So the uh, reaction rate changes in the volume. For the PBR, so we, we put a catalyst back in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the reactor, you know, so we normally can see the reaction rate, you know, with the catalyst the weight, okay? So this is the general, this is the general more balances. However, in, in the reaction, you, we, we normally use conversion to express the progress of the reaction, right? So that means we, we, we usually, you know, to derive the more balances in terms of conversion. So what is conversion? So what is conversion, right? So for example, we have a general, okay, reaction A and B from C and D. So you, and we choose A as a limiting reactant, right? Then you can actually, you can divide by A, right? Get the stoichiometric, right? We, I mean, set the stoichiometric A one, that's easy, you know, for you to calculate the, I mean, the, the, the uh, reaction rate for the other species, right? And uh, okay, then we define the conversion, okay, in terms of A. A is a limiting reactant. So the conversion equals how many more of A reacted divided by the total more of A fed to the reactor. Right. So with that, we can we can calculate the remaining A 
right, in your reactor. For example, now we have conversion X. So you have initial Na0 minus Na0X. This Na0 is reacted, right? So that's remaining. That's remaining. Okay, it's remaining. So, <coughs> so here we have the so DNA over DT, right? Now we use the conversion to express it. Okay, so DNA equals minus NA zero DX. Okay, now we get the more balance in terms of conversion. Okay, that's this one. Okay, right. So you can integrate it, right, to calculate the, the time to achieve conversion X. So similar way, you know, you can derive the more balances in terms of conversion for the flow system. For example, for the CSTR, right, instead of more and A here for the batch reactor, we use the molar rate for the flow system. Right. So again, this is actually the general more balances, right? The general more balances. So because the RA is uniform, so you integrate it, so the, we can get a V, right? So this is the so this is actually the more balances for the CSTR, right? For the for the CSTR. Okay, for the for the P, uh, wait, some still some people in the waiting room. So for the PBR, right? For the PBR, similar as the uh, uh, CSTR, right? So only uh, difference is, you know, now we cannot uh, uh, integrate it, you know, because RA, you know, RA is not uniform, okay? RA is not uniform, so we cannot integrate it. Instead, you know, we need to use the differentiated form, you know, so this is a PFR. So it's, this is actually uh, not very difficult to derive, you know. I, I, strong, I strongly recommend you, you know, derive this kind of more balance in terms of X uh, by yourself. So this is a summary, right? As we, we uh, get the more balances in terms of conversion uh, X. Uh, wait a moment, still some people in the waiting room. So. Okay. 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 So, so when you have the more balances, right, in terms of conversion. Uh, by the way, can you can you hear me? It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. The more balances, right? Actually, this is a design equation, right? So now we get the design equation. So from this design equation, you know, so you can calculate the time for the batch reactor or volume for the flow reactor, right? For example, now I showed you, right, the volume for the CSTR and the PFR uh, to reach conversion x okay so how we can get it so we use the uh, eleven spill plots okay for for the csdr we will plot we will plot the reciprocal of ra versus the conversion okay versus the conversion and uh, the 
area of the rectangle actually is the volume for the for the CSTR, right? For the CSTR. Uh, in contrast to CSTR, you know, because PFR it's a differentiated form, you know. So actually, this is actually the area under the uh, plot or under the curve, you know. This is the area uh, for the PFR. So here you can see, okay, this uh, one over RA versus X, right? You can see actually the RA decreases as the reaction progresses, right? So that means, you know, this is a, a, a positive reaction order, right? This reaction has a positive reaction order, okay? And also, normally it's an isothermal reaction. So the reaction rate doesn't change. So that's why, you know, RA uh, decreases with the conversion. So don't, don't be confused, uh, okay? RA decreases, one over RA increases, right? With the conversion. So you can see the, 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 why the process like this way. Only, only satisfy these two conditions, positive reaction order, isothermal reaction, okay? Then normally you have smaller volume for the PFR than CSTR. As you can see here, right? That's these two, uh, uh, figures clearly shows right PFR has more efficiency, right? Because it needs a smaller volume to reach the same conversion. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Again, here now you can see right. Uh, if you want to plot it, plot the uh, Levin spill plot. Probably you need to know the function of Ra, right? So it means Ra as a function of conversion x, right? So how to, I mean, get this function, right? So first of all, you know, we need to establish the root law. So the root law will correlate Ra with concentration, okay, with the concentration. So uh, here I show you a reaction, right? 2A plus B forms 3C, okay? Then we have a reaction order alpha for A, beta for B, and the overall reaction order equals alpha plus beta, okay? So this alpha and the beta are not necessarily, you know, equaling to the storage metric. That means for this reaction, you know, alpha is not necessarily uh, two. B, uh, beta is not necessarily one, you know. Only if it's an elementary step, then, you know, the reaction order equals the storage metric, okay? So what's the uh, reaction rate? So uh, uh, previously I mentioned, right? So the reaction rate actually equals the two, the change in concentration of A, right, with time, with time, right? And uh, Ra is a function of uh, temperature and the concentration, right? So for the concentration, you know, we already said it's, uh, we can use the root law, and actually we want to build the root law, right? Then we can correlate Ra, uh, with the concentration, okay? So now you can also, you can see, right? We have K here. We have K is a rate constant, okay? Rate constant is a function of temperature. So that's why overall, you know, the reaction rate is, uh, the reaction rate is a function of temperature and the concentration, right? And uh, further, you know, uh, you can see actually, right? The reaction rate, the reaction rate, you know, uh, is determined actually by the activation energy, right? By the active energy. So we don't want to expand it again, okay? So just to let you know, okay, this is what we call the uh, Arrhenius equation, right? For the reaction rate. Okay, so we get the rate law, right? 
and the rinse law can correlate the uh, reaction rate with concentration. But uh, don't forget, you know, our ultimate goal is to correlate Ra with X. So next step is, you know, we want to correlate the concentration with X, right? That's, I mean, from the structure metric. Then we can combine, you know, uh, step one to two, right? To get Ra as a function of uh, X, right? So that's why, you know, uh, in the this this week, you know, we 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 started to learn the uh, storage metric. Okay, so again, you know, we use this general equation as an example, and A is the limiting reactant, right? So we we can we can we can build this storage metric table for the batch system, right? And this kind of storage table, we already use it, you know, uh, in building actually the more balances in terms of conversion, right? We already use it, right? But here, one step further, you know, we correlate the concentration as a function of conversion, right? So for the batch system, so uh, it's easy to, to, to build because we assume there is no change with the volume, okay, right? So that's easy to, to get it. So for, uh, wait a moment, okay, uh, where is my mouse? Okay, okay, it's here. So here, so you can see actually for A, B, C, D, right? There are some uh, analogs, you see? For we, bo both of them, we have CA0, okay? CA0. And also we have uh, a parameter uh, data, data, right? And uh, I know, so I think most of you uh, pronounce it data, right? Actually, when I learned it, Professor, um, pronounce it as theta. Okay. Anyway, so I think I follow you. Okay, theta. So you can say, what's theta actually? Some people are confused. Data is actually a very simple parameter. Okay, we just define it. Okay, we just define, uh, for example, for the species B. Okay, so data B equals the initial more of B over the initial more of A. A is a base, okay, A is a base, right? For the for the batch system, you know, also it's equal to the concentration, right? Because the volume is the same, or the more fraction, right? But for, for, for then you ask, you know, what's data A? Of course, data A is one, right? Data A is one. So that's why you, here you say, this is one, okay? Minus, minus actually we have a stoichiometric factor, times x, but for, for A, the storage metric is one, right? So if you, can, if you can remember this form, you know, though it's easy for you to derive uh, the, the con concentration for B, C, D, you know, for example, right, for B, okay. C A zero is same, okay? Then we have data B minus, minus st storage metric. The storage metric is B over A for B right, times x. Then also it's easy for us, right, to get c, for example, c is zero, right, and there should be theta, uh, data c, it's a plus, for c it's plus, right, c over a x, right? If you read that, I think uh, it's also easy for you to, to remember it, right? But of course, right, if you don't remember it, okay, you know, you try to derive by yourself, you know, derive it by two or three times, you can remember it, okay? So that's for the batch system, okay, for the batch system. And uh, for the flow system, <coughs> for the flow system, okay, instead of the more, right, we use the uh, more rate, more rate. However, you will see, and actually, for the liquid phase, Eventually, we get uh, 
the same uh, function as the batch reactor. Why? Because for the liquid phase, we assume, okay, the density down the chain, then uh, the, also the volume down the chain, the total volume, you know, down the chain. So you can see, actually, you see, right? In, in terms of conversion, uh, sorry, in terms of concentration, okay? So it has the same function as the batch uh, reactor. Okay, if we compare them, right? Compare. Them. So for the liquid phase, okay, it's still very easy. And we are about actually to talk about the uh, storage matter for the gas phase, right? But I think I will hold it until next week. So for the uh, gas phase, you know, we cannot do that way because the volume changes, you know, or the uh, volumetric flow rate changes, you know. So we will introduce another parameter, you know, this epsilon, epsilon, right? We, we need epsilon here, you know, to this epsilon, epsilon, you know. Uh, but we, I mean, this is the overall actually the CA as a function of X, but I don't want to go to details because we will talk about on Monday, okay? Just here, just show you, okay? The gas phase is different. It's more complicated, okay, more complicated. So, okay, so right now, okay, so we have learned, assume, okay, we have learned all the three building blocks, okay? Then we have this general uh, equation, A plus B to C and D, okay? So for the liquid phase, for the liquid phase, okay, uh, either for flow or batch, you know, you can easily actually uh, gets the concentration as a function of x. They have the same form. Why? Because for the flow system, okay, the volumetric flow rate doesn't change. For the battery act, for the battery actor, the volume doesn't change. So they can reach the same form. Okay, they can reach the same form. And then for the for the gas phase, if it's a battery actor. Again, you know, because constant volume, okay, we still have this kind of uh, uh, CB as a function of X, right? However, however, for the gas phase in the flow system, you know, now the volumetric flow rate is not a constant, okay? It's not a constant. So, we need to consider the change, okay? So it's more complicated again. So uh, we will leave it, okay, with the, uh, for for Monday. So that's so far what we have learned, okay, in the in the in the past uh, actually uh, four weeks. So and uh, now you know you can see actually we have more balance rate law and uh, storage metric, okay. Then we combine them together. We can solve either the time for the batch reactor or volume for the flow system, or in a reverse way, you know, you, you know the, vo uh, the volume for the reactor ask you to calculate the conversion, right? A special case of in the catalyst uh, reactor is we have pressure drop, okay? We have pressure drop for the gas phase reaction. And that's what we will talk about, okay? We will talk about, okay? But the the frame, okay? The frame is here, okay? The frame is here. So for you, okay, if you want to solve any problem, I ask you to follow this logic, okay? First, write down the more balance. Second, rate law. Three, structure matrix. Then combine one, two, three to solve the, the problems, okay? So I'm going to use one example, okay, to show you. Uh, so before I move on to example, uh, do you have any question for me? Any question? I mean, today is informal, you know, I mean, 
uh, if you have any question, right, we can use this opportunity to, to answer you. Um, before our first exam, will we have another homework assignment to kind of, I guess, test out our skills with these mole balances and rate laws and such? Yes, uh, it will come out uh, on, on, on Sunday, I think. I'll, I'll post it on Sunday. Great, thank you. And the problem is difficult. Uh, it's not difficult. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it uh, should be more difficult than, than the exam, okay? Homework is more difficult than the exam. I mean, because this is the first time you see this kind of problems, you know, I, I assume, okay, you, you will feel it's very difficult. But exam will be easier than the homework, okay? Great, thank you. Any any more question? Any more question? I mean, for for the for the slides. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use an, my uh, service. Okay, because service uh, my service at uh, don't have enough actually power. So I'm using my my desktop now. But now I'm going to to write something. Okay, so wait a moment. Let me uh, log in. Zoom. Use my uh, service as a laptop. Let's see, let me see. Okay. 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 Can you see the screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay, so <laughs> this is, a, this is a, an example problem actually uh, in Dr. Lee's class. Okay, uh, not in my class, okay, Dr. Lee. I mean, uh, last year. He, uh, yeah, yeah, he taught the chemical engineering, right, last semester. So this is a, a one, uh, exam uh, problem from his uh, first exam. So let's take a look, okay? I mean, our our exam will be very similar, okay? Very similar to that. And the difficulty level should be similar, okay? So, let me... so let's take a look, okay? <clears throat> so we have uh, an irreversible non elementary reaction, okay? It's non-elementary. It, it tells you, okay, non-elementary reaction. 2A plus B to form R. It takes place in a constant volume batch reactor. And also it tells you the reaction uh, kinetics, okay? And with initial uh, CA0 and CB0. So first of all, ask you to show 
a reaction rate equation for Ra in terms of Xa. And it defines M. This M, you see, actually it's a data, data B, right? It's data B, it's data B. Okay, and two, using the separation of variables and the partial fraction technique. Okay, I mean, probably you don't know this one. This is actually a mathematical treatment. I will show you later, okay, I'll show you later. Three is complete the analytic rate equation. Okay, and one and two, I mean, you, you, you first you need to get one, right? Then you solve it, you will get three, right? Four, show a plot to determine the rate constant K using the above rate equation. Okay. So again, you know, if you have uh, this kind of uh, problem, right? So first of all, you know, find out if it's elemental or non elemental reaction. That's important, you know, right? So don't make a mistake here. You know? Second, I mean, don't, don't be worried, come down, okay, come down. So think about the logic, I, I, I repeat again, again, you know. So that means uh, first is what? First is more balances, more balances, right? So what's the more balance for the battery actor? So it's N actually, D and not like this D T equal to R A V equal to R A V equal to R A V, right? So it's equal to D C A D T equal to R A equal to R A, right? Sorry. Uh, I'm in the class. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, sorry about that. Okay, so we have DCA over DT equal R A, right? That's for the, for the more balances, okay? And uh, second, so, Rate law. So the good thing is the problems already tell you the rate law, right? Minus R A equal to K C A C B. Okay. And the third storage storage metric, right? Storage metric. So for, we need, we have two species. We have two species, A and B. So we need to write down the storage metric for both species, okay? So CA equal to CA0, one minus X, right? And for CB, so, so we can do the analog right? equal CA0, so now it's not the, the, the uh, data is not one, right? We can use, it's actually it's M, right? The problem tell you it's M, right? M minus, so what's here? What's here now? Here, let's take a look at the problem again, okay? So here, the storm matrix for B, we need to transform it. We need to transform it. Okay, we need to transform it. So the storm geometry for B is one and a half, right? So here, so that means M minus one half X, right? Now we can combine them together. One, two, three, we combine them together. So let's see what we have, okay? So we have R, A, equal D C A D T equal to minus K C A C B, right? And then what's D C A D T? 
So we need to substitute CA and CB, okay, into this equation. So DCA, DT equals minus CA zero DX DT, right? And then equals minus KCA square, CA square DX. Uh, can you wait a moment? I think my sound is crying. Uh, uh, just wait a moment. Okay, right. So here, uh, here, you know, we can cancel CA zero, the square is canceled, right? So minus, minus canceled. So eventually we can get DX over DT equal to K CA zero on minus X. Right, that's the that's the final actually uh, equation we can we can get. So we can transform it. Okay, we can transform it. So dx okay m minus two is equal to k. C A zero D T. So now our task is to solve, to solve, right? This uh, equation, to solve this equation. So we integrate it from zero to X, D X on minus X. And equal K, CA zero DT, right? That's equal to K CA zero T. So now it's actually how to solve this integration, right? To solve the integration, you know, actually, so you can find it, you know, in the uh, integral actually table for this kind of form, you know, we can split it. We can split it, you know, into two terms. Into two terms, right? And uh, then we we need to find out what's a and b, right? What's a and b, you know? So actually, you can find it. What you know, so a minus. Right plus b should be equal to one. Should be equal to one, right? And then you can get the one minus a. It will it will rearrange it. Okay. So it's all a mathematical treatment. You know nothing else. You know you can you can find it in the integral actual table. So here you know. So actually this is to zero, right? This is to one. And then we can find out a equal to minus two and b okay. So if we get a and b, so we can integrate, we can integrate what? So integrate this part. We can integrate this part, right? And uh, after you integrate, so we can actually, for example, we have a part, okay? You can integrate this part, a, a, dx, oh, this is x, dx, okay? So you integrate it, it's equal to a to log or minus x, x. And then you have b part, 
you can also integrate it. You can minus D log M minus. Okay, integrate them, right? Add them together, then you can get to the integration. So that's what we have, okay? Then the last question is ask you to calculate the rate constant. Then uh, probably you can see here, you know, right? Because this is uh, the function of x, right? This is a time, this is a time. So if you can plot this part versus time, then the slope is k ca0. ca0 is constant, is constant, right? Then you can get to the k. So we already calculated this part, right? The integration, that's a plus b, you know, a plus b, okay? So what you need to do is actually, it's a function of x a plus b part, the integration part, you know, if you can get it, you know, then you plot it with, with t. You can get to this plot, right? So the slope is k c a zero, and c zero is known. So you can get to the k. Okay. So, I mean, except uh, the mathematical treatment, you know, uh, the logic, the logic is exactly what I. Uh, show you, you know, from more balance, rich law to stoichiometry, then combine them together to solve it. For the mathematics, I mean, some problem you will you will see. I mean, it's very actually it's very complicated. You know, you need some uh, uh, skill, you know, to solve it. But I will try to avoid uh, this kind of actually uh, problem in the exam because I'm I'm not actually right. Well, I'm not teaching actually mathematics. Right, you are not learning. The mathematics you are learning i mean uh, reaction engineering okay but in the homework uh, probably you will see i mean more complicated uh, mathematical treatment problem okay that's possible and even sometimes i will ask you to use software for example MATLAB or python or polymath to solve some problems because this only for practice but in 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 the exam i will try to avoid it okay i mean yeah that's it so uh, any more question? Any more question for this uh, problem? Oh, sorry, this should be uh, one, right? also one half. Any more question? Any more question? So if no question, I think I will meet you on Monday. So we will continue uh, the gas phase uh, storage metric, right? Oh, Professor, will you be able to uh, post this review slide on Canvas yes. as well so we can look yes. at it later? Also for the storage metric, I forgot to post. Yeah, I will post it right now. Oh, great, thank you. Okay.